Hello, friends. I am Jenny. I am here to tell you about the new ways of learning English. In the last video, I told you about my journey of learning the English language. As you know, I went to London and joined learning English language classes. I told you about my fantastic teacher and her amazing and useful techniques that helped all the students to be proficient in English language speaking. Today, I'll tell you more new techniques that I learned from my teacher. At first, how to improve your accent and communication. On Tuesday, when I was at work, something interesting happened. Two customers came to our cafe. They are husband and wife. The man starts to speak to me. I know that he speaks English, but I don't understand him. I don't understand what he wants. I think that he wants something which we don't have. So I called my boss. She speaks with the man, and she sells him two coffees and two sandwiches. I am surprised. When they leave, I go to my boss, and I tell her that I am sorry that I didn't understand the man. She says that it is okay. She says that this can happen when people speak with an accent which is new to us. She tells me that the pair was from Australia. The next day, I go to school and tell this story to my teacher. I told her that I felt really stupid when I didn't understand our customers. I wasn't sure that my English was good for my job. My boss was okay with it, but I still needed some help from my teacher. I wanted to know what I could do in these situations. My teacher says, I understand your point. You understand English, which people speak in London. But the Australian accent is new for you. Your ears aren't trained for the Australian accent. You need to listen more to Australian English. You need to train your ears to this accent too. What happened to you can happen to everybody. When you already speak English at some level, and you go to a country where people speak with a different accent, it is normal that you don't understand. It is okay, and it usually takes two weeks before you understand this new accent. Don't think that there is something wrong with you when you don't understand a new accent. With practice, you can train your ears to this accent. Then I ask, so what can I do to understand the Australian accent? I don't live in Australia. Our teacher says, you can watch films with Australian English, or you can watch situation comedies from Australia and soon you can understand. I say thank you, teacher. After school, I go to work again. At about four o'clock, two interesting customers came to our cafe. This time, they are not from Australia. They are foreigners. They want to buy some coffee. They are two ladies and it is clear that their English is very basic. My boss is serving them. When she hears that they don't speak English very well, she does something very interesting. She changes her English. She uses very simple sentences with only three or four words. 
I can see that the ladies understand her. They buy two coffees, two sandwiches, and two cakes. They are happy, and my boss is happy too. When the ladies leave, I tell my boss that it was very nice how she changed her English. So that the two ladies understood her. My boss says that sometimes she has to speak in very simple English. It doesn't matter if the customer speaks English well or not. They are our customers, and we have to do everything possible for them. If they see that they can speak English here, they can come to our cafe every day. I think that our boss is a good businesswoman. She does everything possible to make our customers happy. It is true that we have a lot of customers. Our cafe is busy every day. When you want to understand people with a special accent, listen to audio like short stories. Watch movies with their accent for some time. The next day at school, I told my teacher about my experience with my boss and the two ladies who didn't speak English very well. Our teacher says, Great, your boss must be a very clever young lady. It is true that you can communicate with everybody. People who speak English very well can have a conversation with those who are at the beginning of their journey. Today, we can speak about different levels of English and what you can do at this level. Let's start with the lowest level of 1,000 words. At this level, students can speak about some basic things from everyday life. Speaking is very limited but it is already possible to communicate slowly for a short time with people who want to speak with you. Your sentences are short. They usually have four words. If the others also speak in short sentences, you can have a basic conversation. When students move to a higher level, which is 2,000 words, the conversations are easier and the sentences are longer. This is the level at which you are right now. You can speak about many things from your life. You can speak about your family, hobbies, job, and traveling. Sometimes you can have a problem when you want to go into a deeper conversation on some topics. But this level is usually good enough for everyday use of English. If you want to be able to have a deeper conversation on many topics, it is good to know 3,000 words. It is a good goal for English students of English. Of course, you can learn more than 3,000 words. With more words, it is easier for you to communicate in English. But 3,000 words is usually enough for communicating in English about almost everything. I think that the two ladies at your cafe knew about 1,000 words. Your boss went to their level and she had a basic conversation with them. After school, I go to work. That two women came to our cafe again. They also bring two of their friends. It is my turn to serve them. I speak to them in simple, short sentences. They understand me. This is great. They tell me that they are tourists from China. They tell me that they like our cafe because people understand them here. 
How to Speak Fluently On Thursday, I went to school again. Our teacher asked us about Thursday's school party. One student said that the party was great. We had a lot of drinks and a lot of fun. The girls and boys from our school liked the party. I liked the party a lot, too, because Joe was there. I could talk to him, and we danced together. It was all very nice. There were also two players from my football team at the party. They are from Argentina. Their English was basic. They could speak only in short sentences. But they were very funny at the party. They made a lot of jokes about life in England. About other players from our team. And about girls from their class. Their sentences were very short, with only three or four words, but they were able to speak fluently. When we speak about the party, I tell my teacher. It was really interesting to see that somebody who doesn't know many words can already speak fluently. I know some students who are at a much higher level and they can't speak fluently. My teacher said, the two players from your football team showed you the right way. The players used what they knew. They cared only about what was really important. It was communication. Then one girl asked, so what can we do if we want to speak English fluently? To go to parties and make jokes? My teacher says, First, let me explain what fluent speaking is. Many students think that fluent speaking is fast speaking, with a lot of words and perfect grammar. But there is a better, more correct definition of fluent speaking. Fluent speaking is speaking without long pauses. Some people can do it at 1,000 words. Some people can do it at 2,000 words. But there are also people who know 3,000 words and aren't able to speak fluently. If you want to speak fluently, you have to practice speaking. There is no other way to improve your fluency. Speaking is a physical activity. It is like playing a musical instrument. If you want to play a violin, you need to train the connection between your brain and the muscles on your fingers. When you want to speak well, you need to train the connection between your brain and the muscles in your mouth. Some students have one interesting experience. Maybe you have this experience too. You meet a foreigner who wants to speak with you in English. You want to say ideas that are in your head, but you are not able to do it. <laughs> you can't find the right words. Then, when you end the conversation and play it back in your head, you can say that you actually know the right words. But the conversation is already finished. Why do you have this experience? Because you have little training. Your speaking isn't automatic. And it is not automatic because you don't practice it often enough. When you want to speak fluently, I recommend speaking for at least 30 minutes a day. You can speak to a real person. If you don't have a real person for a conversation, you can think aloud. It is necessary to really think aloud 
and not only think in your head. You need to practice the connection between your brain and your muscles. You can do this by thinking aloud. How to improve listening. The next day, I went to school again. One of the students had an important question. He wanted to know how to improve his listening skills. He wanted to know what the best method is. Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. Good listening skills are very important for communication. If you don't understand what people are saying, it will be difficult for you to speak with them. There are a lot of materials on the internet for the students. Some students can have a problem choosing the right listening materials for them. Now I want to tell you what materials you can use for listening. There are two types of materials which you can use for listening. You can listen to some audio or you can watch a film. These are two different types of materials. When you listen to some audio, it is good to know 95% of the words or more. If the audio has a lot of new words, read the text first if possible and look at all new words in the dictionary. When you practice listening, you practice getting information from a spoken language. You don't try to learn new words. Of course, sometimes you can learn new words, but it is not the main goal. When you listen, concentrate on getting information from spoken English. It is important to use materials at your level of English. For example, you can use books in simplified English, which have an audio recording. I really recommend these books to you. They are fantastic because you can choose a book at your level of English. You can read great books. And the second type of materials for listening practice are videos on English five days. These are also very good. You can start to use them when you know 2,000 words in English or more. This is what you should do with a film. Watch it for the first time with subtitles so that you know the story of the film. Then watch the film without subtitles. If you like the film very much, you can watch it more than once. When you watch one film many times with every view, you can understand more. It is also good to watch videos on the internet about interesting subjects. For example, if you like stories, you can watch short stories. You can also watch reality shows. Reality shows are much easier to understand than films or documentaries because the structure of the show is usually the same. It is necessary to have at least 30 minutes of listening every day. When you listen to English materials, always look at what you already understand. It can be only 10% at the beginning. It is better than 0%. Continue to listen, and soon it can be 20 or 30%. Always look at what you already know. Be happy for every new sentence which you understand. Does this information help you? Yes, says all the students. Thank you. The listening topic is very interesting for me. Now, I know what to do 
to when I want to be better at listening. So, if you want to speak fluently, speak for 30 minutes every day. Do each activity for 30 minutes every day. The voice over in this video is given by English 5 Days. Copying or re-uploading is totally forbidden.